everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you about how you can create a Super Hexagon style game by using Unity and C Sharp. So before we start developing our application or our game, I just want to show you about how our game will look at the end of the video. So let me show you that. So I'm simply going to run the EXC right here. And um, let's wait for that to actually load up. Okay, just load it up and the objective of the game is um, to actually go through the open part of the hexagon without actually colliding with the hexagon. That's the objective of the game and that's actually the core of the game. So you can hear that background music playing because we're also going to do that. So this is what we're going to be doing in today's video. So without any further ado, let's just get it this, that, and now inside of Unity Hub, I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to select 2D because it's going to be a 2D project, I'm going to call the Super Hexagon, and then I'm going to hit create, just set up everything that we need for actually creating our game. So, until this sets up, I'm just going to pause the recording, and once it's done, I'm going to go back. Okay, my project just got created. Now, first, I want to start by renaming the sample seed to be me. And now we go over to the game, and this is how it looks. But I want to change the background color. So I'm going to select the main camera and I'm going to set its background to any color that you want. Essentially, I'm going to go with this. You can change that anytime, or else now it's sold, you can change it. And now I'm going to create. Um, a 2D object, I'm going to create a sprite, and I'm going to reset the transform. So basically, this will mark the center of the world. And now, for the sprite, over here, we can select the knob, which is like a circle. Now we go back to the game view that's super small. So let's scale that up a little bit, and we will make it totally black and transparent. Like so, looks better. Okay, now we actually need to create layer. So again, let's create a sprite and um, let's reset the transform. We will call this player because, you know, this is a player. And for the sprite, again, we will select a knob. And now, this is actually in the center of our world because we reset the transform, but we want to move it up. So we will just increase the Y by 0.6. I play around with that value and that was the best one. And now, for the player, let's add some components. And the first one is going to be a rigid body 2D, which the body type is going to be kinematic because we only want to move through scripts and not courses. Now let's also add um, a circle collider 2D, and let's mark that as the trigger because we don't really want collisions, we just want to know when the player collides with something else. Now let's have a player script, so player, hit enter and enter again. And let this thing actually load up. Nice. And I'll double click it to open it up in the new studio. Okay, that just opened up. And now I'm going to get rid of the two NSU using it statements and the comments. So, first, what we will need is some kind of speed. So, we will do public float and we will call the speed. And you can set that to any value that you want. You can play around with it. But for me, I'll do it as 650. Actually, I spelled that wrong. Speed. And then we can get rid of the start method because simply we don't need it. Now we can over here inside of the update, we can get axis wrong and we can get the horizontal axis. Like so. And probably we should store this inside of a movement variable because we don't want to do the movement inside of the update itself. And let's actually create the movement, so floats movement, like so. Now let's actually create a fixed update method where it's much better to do our input stuff. So let's do fixed update. And here, all I'm going to basically do is I'm going to give the transform that rotate around. This is pretty cool because it lets you actually rotate around a certain point. So right now we're doing player movement, so the player should be rotating around the center of the world. So, the center, I'm going to do vector3.0, which is essentially the center. 
And now for the axis, I'm going to give it vector 3 dot forward. And for the angle, I'm going to do movement multiplied by time dot fixed delta time multiplied by minus speed. And um, minus speed, which is just reversing speed. That means if it's 10, it'll become minus 10. Now, hopefully, fair movement will work. Let me hit save. And I'll just refresh. And if I hit play, so control P, then hopefully, fair movement should work. So let me click in and player movement works. Um, I'm controlling it with my arrow keys right now. I can also control it with my A and D. Very nice. Okay, now let's move on. And so, so now we actually need to create our hexagon because the super hexagon game, which is of course not complete without hexagons. So for the hexagon, we could, we should actually right click go to the facts, and then we can create a line. I'm going to try to create it with the line itself instead of creating something in Photoshop or something like that. Now let's reset the transform, and now what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to go over here to positions, and I'm going to set the values over here. So the first thing that I'm basically going to do is change the Z to be 0. And then I'm going to set the size to 6. And for now, just... Um, don't worry about Z at all. All of it should be zero. Now let's actually start filling up these values here. So the first one is going to be minus 0 0.5, 0 0.8. Let me actually hit F to focus on it so we can actually see what we are doing. The next one is going to be minus 0 0.950 and then minus 0.5 here. Here it's minus 0.8. And then 0.5, 5, 8. And then it is 0.95. And then 0.5, 0 0.5. And then 0.8. Okay, I've messed up something. Well, let's actually fix that. Okay, this one um, at 3, it should be minus 0.8. And now that's a hexagon, and that's really nice. So now we actually created our hexagon. Now we need to um, have some way of actually checking if our player collided with our hexagon. So for that, we actually need collider so actually I forgot to rename this line to be hexagon because you know it's hexagon and so what I'm simply gonna do is instead of just adding a collider to the hexagon I'm gonna create an empty game object and I'm gonna call this collider okay so now we can actually play on this now for the collider I'm gonna create an edge collider 2d and I'm gonna simply put the points right right over here basically i'm going to lock this inspector i'm going to add an other inspector and then i'm going to drag this inspector right over there and then i'm going to select the hexagon and now simply copy in all of these values for size and then element zero element one and all of that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the recording copy in all of those and then i'll be back okay um i'm done copying it in and now if we select the hexagon and if we hit F, actually, let me unlock this inspector and let me close this inspector. There is indeed a green line that goes through the hexagon. There's the green line right over there. But we want it to be only on the insides of the hexagon, right? So um, let's actually put it only on the insides of the hexagon. So I'll hit R. And I'll scale it down. So now it's only on the insides of our hexagon, which is really nice. Now let's add some components to our hexagon. So let's actually collapse that. And first, we will add a rigid body 2D components, and we will mark that as kinematic. Again. And then we will create a hexagon script. Hexagon, hexagon. 
So let's wait for that to actually reload, and then we can open that up in this video. There, double click here to open it up in Google Studio. Get rid of the two NSRA user statement. Get rid of that. Now, of course, we need a reference to our widget body component. So we'll leave this public. Widget body 2D, which is a type of the component, and then we will call this widget body 2D. Now we want some kind of a string speed. So I'm going to do public load string speed. And by default, I'm going to set that to be three. Now we will actually randomize the rotation of our hexagon. So we're doing this so that you see this little open bar, right? So that it's not always on the same place. We want it to be on different places and only then the player actually even needs to move around. Otherwise the player can just stand in one place and all of them will be coming in a line and then, yeah, you know what will happen after that. So for doing that, we will have to set our rigid body to D dot rotation to be a random number. So we get a random number by doing random dot range. And then bracket here first, we have to pass in the minimum value. In our case, we'll do zero and then the maximum value, which will be 360. 360, like so. Now we'll go ahead and shrink it. So we will do transform or actually make it bigger. Transform dot local scale is equal to vector three dot one multiplied with 10 in this case, so some large number. Now we actually need to shrink it. So instead of the update method, we can do transform dot local scale again, minus equals this time, that means we're subtracting, we'll do vector three dot one multiplied by shrink speed, shrink speed multiplied by time dot delta time. And now we'll check if Transform dot local scale is um actually transform dot local scale dot x so less than or equal to we will check if it's less than or equal to 0 0.05 and that means that it's become so small that you know you can't even see and at that point we don't have any use of it so we will simply destroy that game object so we will destroy game object and game object simply refers to whatever game object or whatever component inside of our scene, this script is actually attached to. Now we can say, hopefully the hexagon will become very big and it'll, it'll start shrinking. And then finally, it's just gonna disappear. So let me hit play, so control P again. And I'm sorry for that. I didn't even link up the rigid body 2D. It's asking me for rigid body. Let's link that up because right now C Sharp doesn't know what that rigid body actually refers to. And now we have got that work, right? So that's pretty good. Now actually I just want to increase the line width over there because it looks small. Um, but you can go with this if you want. I'm just gonna increase it right here. So for that, just do width and then just put whatever you want. I can just put one. Five, so and it should look better. Okay, now let's move on. Now the thing that I'm going to be focusing on is actually spawning in hexagons. So let's do that. So what I want to do is I want to drag in the hexagon into the project pane to actually create a prefab out of it, and I don't want any hexagons at the start. I'm going to delete that, and now let's create an empty object, and I'm going to call this spawner because you know that's the spawner and let's create a spawner script so I'll let that actually refresh and let's go click it to open it up in Visual Studio then let's get rid of those unnecessary from one to start and actually let me reset the transform on the spawner which I didn't do Reset. Okay, now let's head back into Visual Studio and now I just want to create some variables. The first one is going to be some kind of spawn rate. So let's create a public float spawn spawn rate and we will default that to be one. Now let's um, actually for instantiating it, we need a reference to it. So let's create a public game object which is going to be the hexagon prefab. 
and we will be instantiating this and we will also say C sharp from unit. So we'll do hexagon prefab. Like so, and now we want to create a float called the next time to find. Fine. And we will default that to be zero. Like so. Now let's just get rid of our start method. Get rid of it. And here instead of our update, we're gonna check if time dot time, time dot time, which our current time is greater than or equal to our next time to spawn. And if that's the case, we can instantiate or create um, a hexagon prefab in the scene. And now we will pass in vector vector three dot zero, which is at the center of the world. And we don't want any rotation, so we'll do quaternion dot identity. So let me show you what these parameters actually are. The first one is of course what to instantiate. The next one is the position, so that's the center of our world. And then um, the rotation, we don't want any rotation, so for that we'll do quaternion dot identity. Now um, the last thing that we want to do is we will set the next time to spawn is equal to we'll do time. Um, Time, time dot time plus one divided by our spawn. So, and now hopefully this is going to work. So, let's hit save and let's head back into Unity. And um, now we need to link up our hexagon prefab because right now Bing doesn't know what our hexagon prefab so prefabs are basically whenever you want it, it's like a variable. Whenever you want it, you can access it and you can put that inside of the scene. So just drag it in. Now we play, we should be able to see multiple. And boom, that works. <laughs> very nice. So all of this is very good. Okay, now the problem is when we actually collide with the hexagon. So let me actually show you. When we collide with these hexagons, so nothing happens, right? We want to solve that problem, and when we collide with the hexagons, we actually want to restart the level for now. In the next video, we're going to have, like, you know, uh, an end menu and all of that stuff. So here, instead of a player script, we'll just add in a quick method, so it's on trigger enter 2D when something enters or triggered. And for reloading our scene, we need to actually reload it, so we will do using Unity engine dot scene management, which is used for scene management, of course. And now for reloading our scene, we will do scene manager dot um, load scene. And now for reloading, there's nothing called reload scene, but we will get that current scene which we are on, which is of course the game scene, and then we will reload it if we're just using load scene. So for that, we will do scene manager again dot get active scene. And this is not going to work because we um, actually need the build index for reloading. So we will get the build index out of it. Now by save, right, uh, refresh, and actually let me show you what build indexes are. Let me go over to the build settings and this over here, which where it says zero, that's the build index. We had more scenes, which we will in the next video. This is just going to keep incrementing. The first scene is the one that loads first. So that's right now at zero. So we close that. And now, hopefully, when we play, when something enters or trigger or something collides with our trigger, the level should restart. That's really nice. It restarts. So now, basically, the last thing that Super Hexagon does is a really cool effect which is it rotates the camera when we're actually playing the game. So if we're doing this fairly easily, we will go ahead and go to the main camera and we will add a component and we will call this rotator. So let's add new scripts and let's hit create that. Okay, let it reload. And then we will double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Now let's again get rid of the two using statements, which we don't need, and then even the comments. So let's get rid of the entire start method, and inside of the update method, we will just 
rotate the camera so it will be transform that rotate which allows us to rotate and then in the first argument we will pass in vector 3 not forward that's the axis of course and the angle is going to be time dot delta time multiplied by any value in this case i'm going to do 40. so now hopefully we go back to unity and um let me load and now by hit play hopefully the camera will be rotated yes it does okay that's really nice now the final touch is going to be to actually add our background music right so in the completed version of our game you saw the background music so that's what we're going to be doing right now let's add the background music in. so basically um in an explorer window i just have um the background music for our game so i just downloaded it from the internet if you want you can also get it so i'm going to drag that into the assets folder okay let that come in right over there and come on that's taking a while so i'm just going to pause the recording and once this comes in I'm gonna... okay finally that came in in two minutes I don't know why it took too long. Maybe um, the file is large or something, but it came in. So, yeah, not a problem. So, um, okay, let's see. Basically, it's just this. <laughs> no problem. Um, let me actually reduce that. Nice. Okay, now we actually want the background music. So we're simply going to create an empty object, right? And we're going to call this um, background music, like so. And this is actually a good tip for you guys on how you can add background music for your games. So basically, create an empty object and then add a component of audio source. And then over here where it says none audio clip, just drag this audio clip in, essentially whatever you have, and then click play on away. That means whenever get when our game starts, it's gonna be there. And also we need to loop it. And I'm gonna reduce the volume here, or else it's just gonna explode. So I'm gonna do 0.3. And hopefully if we play, we should be able to see some background music. And this we do. So now the last part is to actually organize our files. That's not very dirty right now, but I just like to keep it organized. So we'll create a folder for all of our scripts. I'm gonna drag in all of our scripts inside of it. Now we're also going to create what? I'm like right clicking and then I'm gonna point in. Um, we are also gonna create a folder for our prefabs. And of course, our hexagon is a prefab, so let's drag that in. And we are also going to create a folder for our audio clips. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to put that audio clip in there. Now we hit play. Everything is still working, right? So that's very nice. And basically, we have created the core of our game. So that is it for this video. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.